What's going on with you guys, man? It's your boy Mikado Sensei back with another video review. Um, it's been a while since you guys seen my face. I know. Took a little time to you know get stuff together. Been starting a lot of new ventures and things of that nature. So today just seemed like the perfect day to come out here and do this video review. Um, today we're gonna be talking about something called light language. Um, very, very interesting, very high vibrational language, man. Definitely a lot um, connected to this, a lot to tap into with this language. So, I'm gonna get right into it. Roll the clip! It's gonna be fun. <laughs> right into it so starting off what exactly is light language light language is a form of communication that bypasses the human mind human limitations around the meaning of words light language doesn't have to be words it could be sound color numbers sacred geometry and more light language has no fixed alphabet it is a vibrational expression that speaks directly to our soul and dna so with this it can't really be understood through the mind it's more so um through the heart if you ask me um it is accessed through the vibration of love it's understood through the heart it's not something that the logical mind can really take in and access it's meant to be accessed through the heart meant to be felt with light language in my opinion um what you feel is more important than what you think. Um, I feel that as you begin to use light language, it opens you up in a way that could change the way that you perceive communication, even the way you perceive energy, period. Light language is very multidimensional, just like ourselves. Um, has a variety of different applications. It could be sung, spoken, drawn, danced, and more that I have have yet to come across, but there's definitely more applications that's being used for light language. Um, this is something that works whether you believe it or not, you know, uh, working on a soul level. So if you don't work on that type of level, it's going to take some time to, you know, get acclimated to this language. But um, it is a soul language, a heart language. Also, light language is nothing new under the sun. This is a very ancient language that used to exist on Earth for a long time, humans were using it, extraterrestrials were using it. If you ask me, this is a language and intelligence, heart intelligence, that is making its way back into the culture, into the society, into the surface humans, if anything. So you may not understand uh, it first, or maybe the first couple of times, but with time and uh, being present while listening to these light languages, light codes being transferred, um, you will start to pick up on the feel of what these messages or activation light codes are beginning to send out. Um, there really is a light language for anything. So if you're sad, there's a light language for it. See how it makes you feel, you know, the testing the waters and what light language works for you or what channeler, you know, works best for you because people channel different codes and have a different way of saying things. But I feel like the main thing is, you know, how it makes you feel. I'm going to drop a few links um, below of channelers that have worked for me and I definitely like just to get you kind of acclimated to uh, what, what the possibilities are with this light language and what it sounds like, what it feels like type of thing. And in a few, we're going to head back to the crib, show you guys a little bit of the written light codes I own and stuff like that. So stay tuned. So we're back in the crib and as promised, I let you guys peep my personal uh, light language codes that I do have present right now. Um, I usually use these, I want to say every day, or my crystals are absorbing the codes that they do have, so one of those two are either working throughout the day or so, but let's check it out. So getting into this first print over here, this was all hand-drawn, hand-painted um, by a friend of mine named Caroline. I'm going to actually leave the link below for to get yours drawn. It's a personal sacred alchemy light language symbol. 
Um, this is when I was kind of definitely first getting into it. This is, as I said, my first one, but um, it definitely stood out to me. Just the colors, the symbols all around. It was definitely resonating. Even this giant snake that I have over here, like with the symbols, like I didn't know how this tied into me, but as I continued my journey of getting like my Akashic records read, things of that nature, I found out why this snake was here and this stuff. The colors started to make sense, you know, like I'm a Fiacus starseed. I'm a part of the Alpha Serpent bloodline. So that I feel like that kind of ties in with uh, who I am, you know, even though I didn't really know it right here. Um, usually I use this as like a protection barrier. I have my Sintamani stones. I usually put that here, Moldavite, Tibetan Tectite, all that good stuff. Um, here. I have another uh, light language piece. Let me see. This uh, channeled by Witeki Kulov and given by Ariane of the Yale. So we know the exact um, people that gave this light codes to the channeler as well. Um, I actually did have a ring that had the same light language print. I had lost it, but I knew that I usually use crystals to activate and tap into these light codes or store them as well. So this right here is a white azestulite, Azazel activated, as well as, um, I forgot the name of these, but they're kind of along the same lines. But these work with these codes very well in terms of storing and transmitting these codes to other things um i also have one down here this is another personal one but i'm not going to show y'all too much of these because yeah these for me you know what i'm saying but you can see these are the drawn light codes and see what they look like um the one at the bottom uh see the symbols are more like a graph or so different type of codes being drawn but similar but you know the designs is different uh, the bottom one was actually done by Jody Simpson, the uh, conduit. She has a lot of good light language things. I use these light language codes that's supposed to um, help to raise the vibration of Earth as well, man. I'm going to add all these links to all this stuff um, in the comment sections below just so you guys can check them out for yourself. But one thing to definitely take from this, and I would advise, if you are working with light codes like these, I find that crystal, um, particularly quartz, they work very well with absorbing the energy and transmitting them, as well as water. You know, water has always been a good thing to hold energy, um, whether it be vocally or whatever the case may be, or drawn codes, it absorbs the information very well as well. Um, in a quick tutorial, I guess, it's on uh, how I activate these codes and bring them into the crystals as well. Um, practicing ceremonial magic also helped me to um, do this as well. Because really, when you're working, doing ceremonial magic, which you are working with, is light. Um, so here we have this completion code, right? I would take my two fingers and the sword mudra, I guess, and I would trace it all around until, you know, creating this image in my head as well and imagining it, um, white light coming out through my fingers and into this. And I would draw lines, maybe connecting to the crystals and stuff, showing the pathway in which it would take or what I'm trying to do, you know? And I feel like that definitely does work with, for me, at least. Um, and channeling these energies or creating a, like a crystal grid or something to help um, absorb these uh, codes. So here, I'm using um, a light language to help program my tea, water. Also using this Solomon, King Solomon's Cubit, which is really good for enhancing um, sound frequencies and things like that. So these are both working synergetically to help enhance the water or the tea. Light language specifically for water. I want to thank you guys for checking out this video, man. I hope this review does some amazing stuff for you guys. Um, hopefully open up uh, your eyes to, you know, seeing the bigger picture of just even trying things out like this. Because 
um, even if it's new to you, you know, is getting acclimated. You probably won't get it right away, but one of these days you keep trying it and keep uh, opening your heart up and yourself to understanding these this language, um, you will get it, you know? Just take some time and acclimation. But I'm gonna catch you guys on the flips, man. I hope you enjoyed this. To the next time.